Hello everyone and welcome to Countermeasures. Here is what's coming up. Nigeria's judiciary at choke point. Nigeria under Buhari, rule of law, arrest and perceived intimidation, harassment and detention of critics. Nigeria's pretense to upholding the basic values that underpin democracy under the Muhammad Buhari government has once again been laid bare with the continued unjust detention of Omoye Elishore, former presidential candidate, and the convener of the Revolution Now protest movement asking for good governance. Chihore's arrest serves as a sad reminder of the country's inglorious past where the military held sway and any form of dissent or contrary view was taken as an act of rebellion which must be swiftly crushed with viciousness. Just as coups and unconstitutional overthrow of government are no longer popular, so also are the abuse of power and authoritarianism intolerable. Considering the state of insecurity in the country, state repression, discontent, displeasure and frustration based on the deliberate weaponization of poverty and unconscionable rulership in Nigeria. How close are we to the tipping point? We examine this issue as countermeasure starts right now. Once again, we're back on countermeasures and uh, with us to the, discuss certain issues in the Nigerian state, especially Nigeria under Buhari, the rule of law, arrest and perceived intimidation and detention of critics. We have uh, a barrister in the house, Barrister Mohammed uh, Fahimi. It's a pleasure having you on Sahara TV countermeasures. Thank you very much. In recent times, President Buhari has clamped down on perceived uh, opposition using the state security agencies uh, in order to muzzle the opposition. If I may ask you, are we back to the dark era of state repression? I pray not, and I hope not. Um, I will say this with all sense of sincerity because, you know, I'm a very open-minded and straightforward person. Buari is a man I like so much. Unfortunately, the methods and the policies he's bringing out into rerunning or rebuilding Nigerian states are all flawed policies, with most profound respect to him. Um, my good friend Chowore, who is also my father's son, as you all know, was very close to Chief Ganifarami, he's been locked up for 45 days. When that, I heard that about the application that I was going to go before a court of law, I said to myself, there is no judge in the history of the world, not even Nigeria, that will grant us an application. What even now shocked me was a man who was a revolutionary like us. A man who I met on the revolutionary trend, following my father, following Femi Falala, following Alal Akabashon, Justice who became a judge, Justice Tawokta, who granted that application. It's disgraceful, it's disheartening, it's dehumanizing, I don't know what is happening in this country. As for the SSS, uh, I think we're going back to the Obasan days, when uh, they used to see, uh, climb the fences, point guns at our house in Suleri, uh, telling my father to come out and that he's under arrest. Uh, and then it was NSO, Nigerian Security Organization. That is what is playing out now. Are we saying that the head of the DSS or SSS or whatever they call themselves now has no logic to think? Don't you have lawyers there who can advise you? Okay, let me ask you one question. As a normal person, what is the offense of Omo Yele Shuwore? He contested as a presidential election, um, a presidential candidate. He came third. He left it. Buhari won, continued to rule. But when things started going awry, ah, please, please, Oga, we faced this thing four years ago. We can't face this thing again. And he came out and said, look, we need a revolution. It means virtually nothing. It just means, Mr. President, please concentrate on your job. There are too many complaints. You are a former general. Nigerians are being killed. So-called herdsmen are coming in to slaughter people in the southwest, the southeast, the south-south. We have a minister of defense, the old one, who was a retired brigadier general, who was talking absolute nonsense, saying that the, the parts of the uh, herdsmen should still be uh, maintained. Does he think we are in the Neolithic times? And the whole world has moved on. Now we have, now I'm, I'm happy that we have a Minister of Defense 
who was who is a lawyer one, a combatant two, and was a military administrator in Sokoto during IBB's time. I get to know these things because I schooled in Sokoto. Although during IBB's time, I, had, I was already out. I was a youth like then. But there's nothing that goes on in Sokoto because it's a state that I was treated the way I was treat, I would be treated in Lagos, as if I was in my father's house. So I make the point of you to know whatever is happening in Sokoto. So we are waiting for this new Minister of Defence to see what policies is going to put in place to stop the banditry, to stop the kidnapping, to stop the uh, harassment, and to make sure we wipe out all the killer headsmen. Those, all those guys have to be killed. We don't need to take them to any, any court of law for anything. They should be slaughtered because they have killed Nigerians. Back to still show rescues. But show rescues. There have been reactions, um, uh, considerable reactions as regards the legality of his arrest and uh, including the charges that have been leveled against him by the DSS. Let's get your reactions, especially towards the legality. You are a lawyer. What's your immediate reaction towards the legality of his arrest and the charges that have been leveled against him? There's no charge. There's no legality. Let me read section 34 for you. Every individual is entitled to respect for dignity of his person and accordingly, A, no person shall be subject to torture or inhuman or degrading treatment. B, no person shall be held in slavery and servitude. Three, no person shall be required to perform forced or compulsory labor. I will stop there. The DSS are meant to have proper intelligence data. If there is anything he has done, it is the police that should go and arrest your warrior. Sir, you have been charged with so-so and so. Please come in for questioning. From what you hear, all sorts of snippets of lies and things like that. Uh, was, some money was found on him. There's a foreign government using him to exactly. upstage and all sorts of nonsense. That's why I say, look, until you can substantiate that evidence, there is no charge. And what did he use? The term revolution. Even the oldest person, the oldest lawyer in DSS, should use his head to know that that means nothing. It's a wake-up call just for the president. Mr. President, please, wake up. I know this might be the only time you can understand because you are a former military head of state. I can't tell you that, look, um, how do, there's, there's, a, there's a term we use now. Uh, declare a state of emergency <clears throat> in certain places. That exactly. It's a way of ridiculing Bari, telling him, well, guy, you're not doing well. Look at, let's even look at now the, the uh, ministers. You combine two sensitive positions, Minister of Finance and Minister of Budget and Planning. You put on that inexperienced girl who knows nothing. When you have people like Fola Adiola rotting away, the man who founded GTB. Even if we are going to go back to the PDP days, we have people like uh, uh, Professor Charles Soldo who can share this to. We can put Fala Adela in Minister of uh, Finance and put Soldo in the uh, 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 budget and planning. He has only three years and four more months to go. There is no rewind button. He made this mistake with Fashola. And Fashola, out of being big headed, yes, you are an excellent governor. But when you think about the Federation, it's a very large country. If you have to construct a road from here to Joss, you know what it means. To me, it's Lagos, but we are still on now. For so long. So those are policies Bari has to change. And I keep hearing him that want to upgrade education, want to do this. He has made the most fundamental mistake by putting, I'm sorry, I don't mean to be sectionist in Northern there. No Northern can be better than the Southern in terms of education. The best educational system was one uh, late chief Abba Femi Aula or SAM put in place. And even the Northerners that benefited from it can testify to it. So if you want Nigeria to go forward, you want the North to be educated as you expect. Remove Adamu Adamu, who is an accountant and a journalist, remove him from that place. And put a Southerner. We must face facts. There's no Northerner that can slap me in court. No way. There's no way. Unless you want to use that veto power that I am president, I'm a Northerner. I'll put this one as my attorney general. It, it was a different thought everyone thought when uh, they the, the said the new ministers are coming in. We all thought Kayama was going to be the minister for uh, justice. 
Il faut très mal à mes deux. Il faut que tu all this connect, connect with us. So, Ebouari has to. My advice to the judge handling it now, no matter how invasive she wants to be, she should make the order to release Shore immediately and unconditionally. Let, let's, let's get to the, to, to the present judge because Shore filed a, a motion challenging the ex parte order, uh, granting the DSS 45 days to keep him pending investigations into his involvement uh, in alleged terrorism. Honorable Justice Sinkeyo Evelyn Maha, the present judge, who argued that she was unable to overturn the ruling of a learned colleague, despite all the multiple precedents that was presented and the rules of court, empowering her to do so. What's your reaction to her you know, refusal? First of all, an expert order lasts only for seven days. After seven days, it has expired. That's why I said, there's no way you grant an order to keep someone for five days, which you know that order will last in seven days. If that order has not been um, effected within that seven days, it lapses. Even if it has been effected, if I file a motion to the even if it has not been argued, that order has lapsed automatically. So she should know what she's talking about. That's why I say a lot of judges that we put on the stand today, I mean, they're, they're an embarrassment. It's a disgrace. Someone like this woman who made that statement should not, in, in the days of my father, would not have been a judge. With most of our respect to her, I don't know her personally, but from her utterances, it shows she does not, is man no man. A, a lot of people have actually called to question the reason why she actually, I mean, gave that, knowing, for example, that she rapidly granted a motion, ex parte in the case of the Federal High Court, to stop the trial of Justice Water on again in his corruption ordeal earlier this year. And he, she, she granted it. And one begins to wonder, uh, her ruling served to restrain the Code of Conduct Bureau back then from proceeding to hear the charges against Onoge, despite the uh, evidences against Obawemi uh, against, against Onoge. So grant? the question now is, does her jurisdiction end with friendship and alliances? How can you grant an order against the Code of Conduct Bureau, a constitutional empowerment? No doubt, I should be removed from the bench immediately. There's no doubt. If I was the CJ, immediately she'd be dismissed. There's no forget about whether she's doing it in the interest of the government or not. Otherwise, it will go back to the CJ, Tanko Mamad, and he will look very bad. It is because this is happening during his tenure. If she even denied uh, Mr. Fallon the opportunity to orally apply for the bail of his client, which is allowed under the same terrorism uh, for act. Uh, for uh, 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 presidential aspirants. Ah. Well, uh, if my father didn't have hypertension during his lifetime, if he was still alive, he would have it based on this case. It is disgraceful and disheartening. That woman should not be a judge. And the man who started this, Taiwo Taiwo, has turned into an escape artist. Is he around now? He's on vacation. <laughs> Enjoyed his vacation. He gave an order, ex parte, to restrain a free citizen of this country. Naturally, someone like Tao Tao should be put on trial. Or charges should be levied against him by the NGC. Because that's a clear violation of Section 34, whether it's mentioned or not. She remains a free citizen of this country. Nobody needs to educate anybody on that. And I think Bari, with all due respect, has to call these people to order and tell them, look, I was brought out of retirement in Daura to come back and fix the rot in this country, rot co caused by that thief, Olusha Gwambasanjo, and his brother, IBB, because those are the two biggest looters. Uh, uh, Atiku Abaka is just their boy boy. Those are the two richest. I do Dangote does not even come, he's, you know he's a legal man. Dangote will do things orderly, will do things corporately, structurally, the way the law permits, and the way the business ethics permit. Dangote, I'm sorry to say, I don't wish the man bad, though. he's doing his best, but in the next 10 years, Dangote cannot have what Obasanjo or IBB or Atiku has, mm -hmm. or even Jagaban. Mm -hmm. They settled down to steal state funds. Jagaban is still stealing it tomorrow. Atiku was stopped when Buari cancelled this Intel thing, where he put his son to be MD. That was what caught into... Uh, articles funds. But for Obasanjo and uh, his brother IBB, to tomorrow they are still being enriched because all their cohorts have made money 
and they still go and pay homage to the Ogas. Hmm. You yeah, can imagine when uh, IVB's uh, daughter did a wedding, 42 private aircrafts, 42, when they are to pay homage. So you hmm. can know how much they've stolen and how they have put their people in place. That's but, sad. Uh, that's sad. a different thing. The Nigerian Constitution provides safeguards for freedom of association and yes. freedom of speech, yes, yes. just like you have initiated yes. earlier. But the situation on the ground reflects the government's, as well as extremist determination to undermine many of these uh, protections. Should Nigerians, as a matter of fact, be wary at this time? Nigerians should be wary. Nigerians should be very wary because if a man who was a presidential aspirant, for God's sake, in this country, can be picked up like a rat, then the students should know they are not safe. Market women should know they are not safe. You know what they call Rolga at night? Wherever you are walking and the police pick you up. Nobody is safe. Um, look at the people we have in the National Assembly. I don't know what it is they are doing. They are struggling to be speaker. They are struggling to be Senate president. The Senate president, the one before Saraki, who we even thought, ah, is knowledgeable, is a medical doctor. He's a man who has had experience. Declared IPOB. Uh, terrorist terrorist group. Group, exactly. They did not declare headsmen terrorists. Meanwhile, the headsmen will come in, go into your farms, destroy the farms, rape the women, dismember the women. The one they even did in the kitty diet even makes me have a lot of ill feelings about Fayoshe. Fayoshe came out with the hunters, the traditional hunters, was dancing on TV. Immediately after the dance, he abandoned the hunters, went into the government house and doubled his guards. That same week, a pregnant woman was picked up on her farm in Ekiti. She was first raped, then she was disemboweled, then the baby brought out. Then they killed her and burnt her corpse. Up to today, no Ekiti. You don't even fire me, he's there now, has addressed it. In Ondo, my own hometown. Ah, God. There are things that can make a man go very, very angry. Arakuri. I don't even, I can't even remember his name because I've tried to blot that. I've, I've tried to blot that. I can only really remember Arakuri SAN. Hmm. Has allowed militia to build a camp in Ondo. Hmm. They are now calling themselves vigilante houses. Hmm. What's wrong with using the Ondos as vigilantes? Eight separate people, eight separate families were slaughtered on Nore Road. Arakuni did as if he doesn't, didn't know what was happening. Until they killed the daughter of Fasha hmm. Even before that, he was attacked twice. He managed to escape. Oh, that's all. It, it's not going to happen again. Now it's his own belief. Until they killed Fasha daughter on the same road. You are not going there to give condolence visit. The most annoying thing was Ashiwa Jubala met him, but now went to a man who was still grieving. That please don't let them use your daughter's this thing for political gain. I said, ah, God. If it was the last thing I would do, I would shoot him hmm. on that spot. I lose a child. They are coming to tell me I should not allow people to use. What do you want me to do? And I tell the whole world how you loan the woman money to go and treat her cancer. I saw fucking what? Where did you get the money? Did you not steal everything from Lagos State? But well, that's the sort to face. Papa Shanti could not do anything. Because when these things were happening, you turn the blind eye. I, I don't know what is happening. It's not my business. You don't want sympathy now that they've killed your daughter. I've not been to my father's graveside in two months because of all this killing and uh, kidnapping and so on. What kind of country are we running? And we have a senior advocate who said, I'm not a rubber stamp senior advocate. But those uh, doing banditry, crossing over the borders of Nigeria to kill people in Zamfara, as far as it's concerned, they're not, they're not terrorists. Those kidnapping, as far as it's concerned, they're not terrorists. The killer headsmen, as far as it's concerned, they're not terrorists. So that just to show you they are benefiting Starting from Saraki to this one, this Lawa Namet, who has been struggling to be Senate President, of what gain is it now? Let's even say Lawa uh, uh, Ahmed does not say anything. Look at Bajapia Mila, who is a lawyer. 
who's the speaker. Can't you say something? The number four man. They call you Abba. Ah, okay. We did expect you to say that. Oga, okay. please. They are killing people in the in southwest now. What do you want us to do? Are you, are you going to be civil war? Did you think any of them will survive civil war? That's the first place they will burn the National Assembly. But, 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 the, the question, the most important questions on the mouth of every average Nigerian at this point in time is, is the interest of the people and the nation prioritized by those at the helm of affairs of this country? Does national security have any, any meaning in, in our time? It's only God that's saving us. Do we have national security? Is not what I've been telling you. The Juku and the teams are still fighting. What has national security advisor done about it? Or does he have to wait for the Minister of Defense to say anything? What, have we even seen the Minister of Defense make a public pronouncement? This is what I intend to do. Or is he not allowed to do that? Or could lie Mohammed, who has been there for four years? What, are, what is he saying? Is Lai Mohammed that should be responding to Siore? Yes, what do you want? Ah, we're going to do what kind of revolution? I'm a lawyer, you are a, a journalist. State your terms, let's see what you want. What you want. Oh, okay, I'm, I can't speak to you. Speak to the PAMSEC. It should be between Lai Mohammed and Siore. The DSS have nothing. The only thing the DSS have to do is you can investigate. Secretly, that's why they call them DSS. That's why I say, I'm sorry to say, the person there does not know what he's doing and does not seek proper legal advice. It's not by saying, I'm the director general of DSS or I'm the guy of DSS. All that doesn't matter. If you don't display the natural aptitude and reason and the knowledge to show that, yes, you know what you're doing. Sorry. Finally, finally, Barrister, considering the state of insecurity in the country, state repression, the discontent, the displeasure and frustration based on the deliberate weaponization of poverty and unquestionable rule uh, in Nigeria. How close are we to the tipping point? Yeah. Yes, you're talking about close to the tipping point. I would not have the tipping point. When you go out, are you, are, you, are, you, are you confident? You have to look left, right and center now. During Mimi, when Mimiko was governor of Ondo State for eight years, I was traversing the length of Ondo. My mom even said, please, this traveling is too much. I said, ah, please, I'm the first son. I know my rights. I know my duties. I go to my dad's, uh, this, at times I go to the head of family. What do we need to do, sir? Uh, how are we going to do this? My dad's uh, remembrance is coming up. He said, you know, I can't come because, you know, it was my... I said, that's for barrier. I said, no, 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 it applies to everything. Whatever you want to do, you do, you bring to me. So we knew, I knew how I transversed. Because uh, there were communal classes during Mimiko's time now. I even witnessed one. He got down. Mimiko got down, governor, from his convoy. I they said, what's wrong with you? Are you mad? Can't I'm about government Jacob now. What was the problem? They settled it at the beer parlor. I was at the back. He, I think his convoy was about six cars. We were at the eighth car. My mom would say, what's the ghost? I said, you are witnessing history. Governor's gone. I said, Governor Bale. Ah, she said she to his guy, don't get down. Move to this side, you can see. They sat down there for 30 minutes. He caught up the ship, took them back to uh, Akure, and they settled it. It's not about building a house or building a city alone that makes you a governor. You must end the respect of people. So, uh, for Arakuni uh, SAN, uh, he has made Ondo totally unsafe for us because I lost an, aunt, I lost an uncle, uh, Chief Awushika, I was not able to go for the burial. I also lost someone who I consider a grandmother, Chief Mrs. Fajam, well, Princess Fajam Roku. I wasn't able to go, to go for the burial because I just thought to myself, if I go now and they kidnap me, who's going to bail me out? How long do I know I'm going to be there? They can kidnap my father's son, Nozekome, who he knew, he knew what he, he saw and what he had to pay before he was released. So for me, I'm not safe even in my father's land. So for, I think Bari has to sit down. If I were him, no more public, no more foreign trips. All this world going to Japan, going to mm -mm. sit down. Call your full army people. We know a uh, uh, guy OBJ called them just to show power. 
He knows where all these things started from. And unfortunately, Obasanjo is the cause of all these things. Hmm. Because we know before Boko Haram gained ground, there's a student that I know. He's in America now. He served in Bauchi. He said every day, one Boko Haram member was being killed while he was in service there. So Obasanjo had fueled the pots. Unfortunately, the first recipient was a Yadua, so they didn't do much. Who oh, is a house of flying like us? They left him. Immediately, good luck, he got in. Mm. They fired him. Good luck could not get to those spaces, the three states which they dominated during his lifetime until Buhari came in. Now, Buhari zone is for those who profess that he should, be re he should represent them. He has talked to them, look, this is my own government. We are going to stop all this rubbish. Some have stopped and reconverted themselves with the help of politicians into killer headsmen. Because most of the politicians own uh, cows. And they're the ones yeah, sponsoring all these uh, killer, just to make sure that uh, Buhari gets back what he gave them in 1984, when he detained some politicians for 50 years, 100 years, 200 years. Some of them died in prison. Some of them came out and died immediately. So he has not been forgot, forgiven about that. And he knows all these people. Pick them. So like a passenger who wasted 16 billion. Why are you using generator now? Why should I be using generator when the money in my country is enough to feed four countries? Go to Kutonu. Obasanjo was the one that started supply of electricity to Kutonu. It has not blinked. Go and look at the road he built for them in Kutonu. You can't find one crack. And the man is walking free. So if Buhari wants to help, this is the message to him. And I always tell him, I always write on my Facebook blog, I send to as many, um, as many journalists as possible, whoever can reach him. Please arrest Obasanjo and collect everything that belongs to us. Arrest IBB and collect everything that belongs to us. Nothing will happen. The heavens do not fall. Immediately they finish article zone, collect our own things. The people of Adamawa are, are entitled to at least two, two universities. Lagos is entitled to at least four airports, not just seaports. Lagos is entitled to 16 separate railway lines, that living out of Lagos, from the northwest all the way to the south south. Lagos State has the opportunity of generating one trillion dollars on its own. We're not talking about the rest of it. Now, for the Minister for Agriculture, please go and see how you can get a thousand acres on loan in the concurrent list of what you can produce, how you can package it, which is the most important thing, and sell it abroad so that we can curb and restrain the impending um, uh, financial destruction coming. Ahead. And Bari should move that girl, please. It, 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 my heart is in my mouth every time I look at it and I see this small Zena Bamed is the one going to control two ministries. Someone as brilliant as Fashala could not do, do it. Now they've given him works and housing, which is another mi mistake. Anybody in Lagos State can close their eyes and become Minister of Works and Housing. But the power, with what he has done so far, at least I can get three hours of power every day. It's his own mistake, too, but we can blame him. <laughs> Because he gave some uh, states in North 24 hours. We that can pay for 24 hours, he didn't give us. So I think Buhari should sit down and reiterate and do some jogging, proper jogging around, because there's a problem in Nigeria. And if he leaves power, it is going to consume him. Whether it's in Daura, I pray it's not the problems of Nigeria that will kill him in Naira. So not, not thinking that when he leaves, he will still remain an APC giant. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> I like you, that's what I'm telling you. Thanks, Thank you Thank very you. much for your insightful analysis. Thank you.